Here are some examples of scenes that were created using assets generated from Rockify. Pretty much any subject matter is possible, and you're only really limited by your own imagination. In this beginner tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can quickly get started using Rockify and how you can use it to speed up your workflows. The version we're going to be using today is Blender 3.6. The very first step is going to be installing Rockify. So we're going to go up to Edit and then Preferences. And then you want to go to the Add-ons shelf on the left. Then we're going to go to Install and we're going to choose our Rockify zip file. Click on Install Add-on, and the add-on is now installed. Next, go up to the search box and type in Rock. This will find the Rockify plugin, and just make sure it's enabled by clicking the tick box. Now you can close down the Preferences panel, and go to the viewport and hit N on the keyboard. From there, you'll be able to find a new tab that says Rockify. Click on the tab to open the plugin. You should now be able to see the Rockify user interface. To begin with, we're going to start with the default Blender scene. The very first step is to delete the light and the camera from the default scene. Then we're just going to zoom out a little bit and scale up the default cube to about 30 times the size. And I'm just going to place it more in the center. The next step is going to be resetting the scale on the default cube. And to do that, we're going to go up to Object, and we're going to go to Apply, and then All Transforms. That will reset the transforms on the primitive and make sure that we don't have any problems using the plugin. Now I'm going to go to the Rockify plugin and choose the Volcanic preset and click Generate Rock. And as you can see, it's now generated this sort of cube-like cliff shape. If I hit Tab and go to the Edit Mode, I can then adjust the vertices and sort of change the shape of the primitive. I can also add additional edge loops and start to tweak the primitive shape, and you'll notice how the cliff geometry automatically updates as well. Pretty much any shape is possible, and the workflow is completely non-destructive. Now that you have a basic understanding of how to use the plugin, be sure to check out my channel in the next few weeks for a more in-depth and complete workflow video that addresses texturing and export into game engines like Unreal Engine 5.